scared some of you last week when I talked with enthusiasm about the senior games because this is a smaller crowd and these three athletic people can't wait to talk to you. Um, Ginny Callan was going to introduce them and I'm filling in for her because she wasn't able to be here. So I have to read my little notes here. Um, we're going to hear from George Moltz, who's the only paid person for the senior games, who lives in Rochester, Vermont, a very small town in south central Vermont. And then two participants, Margaret Gibson from East Montpelier, who has won podium honors at the National Senior Games in track and field, and she'll tell you more about that. And Sarah Bombardier, who's nice enough to come from Richmond, Vermont, and has competed over the years, I don't know how many, in swimming, biking, power walking, and triathlons. So just to, just to give you a little bit more information um, from what I know, Ma Margaret's uh, father and mother, well, she grew up in Montpelier and her father and mother used to walk downtown. I'm sure you've all seen them, Ernest Gibson and his wife, Charlotte. And Ernest Gibson, as you know, served as a Superior Court judge and also on the Supreme Court. And so here she is from East Montpelier. But, let, but all three, um, welcome them, please. And before I turn it over, I'm supposed to give you two notes. One, uh, turn off your cell phones. Oh, there's one or two people who have to do that. And the second one is there are um, more pamphlets of what's to come. And also at the piano, there are um, pictures of what's to come. So without further ado, I don't know. Do you want this mic on or not, George? I'd rather not have it, OK, so he's going to try it without the mic. And if he needs it, then he'll pick it up. And if, it's, if I turn it off, just press this little button on the side. Anyway, thank you for coming. And I'm sure we're going to have a great time. Um, I, my husband participated in the senior games. Those of you who were here last week know that. And uh, I have found it to be a really wonderful thing for older adults. And I think Margaret's going to tell you what her response is when I was talking about whether or not people our age were too old to pick up the discus. <laughs> Thank you very much. George. Oh, could I have the lights off or dimmed or something? That would, that would be super helpful. <clears throat> Thank you. Then you can see my beautiful colors. <coughs> OK, I'm George. Um, I am the games coordinator of the Vermont Senior Games Association. Um, we have one of the cooler logos around, I think. Um, you see some of the other states are not so great. Um, as you can see, we started in 1983, and um, I would echo um, the sentiment that we have so many stories of athletes who just started because friends said, oh, you should try this, because you know a lot of women in particular didn't do a lot of athletics back in your day. And one of our greatest athletes, Flo Myler, only got into senior games because her friend Barb Jordan talked her into it. And Flo is now 89 and a world record holder in multiple events. So anything's possible. Okay, so see if I need this thing to work. Oh, okay. So um, first of all, I want to say something about my PowerPoint. Um, as it says here, um, I used to be a high school teacher. And um, because I used to be a high school teacher, I know a little bit about how people learn. And some people learn really well verbally. Some people need to read and process things. So I am going to, I know you know, all know how to read, but I will read what I have on here, and hopefully between one of the two um, modalities, you'll be able to process the information. So again, I am the games coordinator for the Vermont Team Games Association, and my role is that I'm the liaison between the athletes, the individual sports coordinators, and the various venues that we use around the state, and I'll get all into this later on. I'm also the link between the state and the national senior games. Um, if something happens at Nationals, it comes to me. If something happens in Vermont, I send it to Nationals. Before joining the Vermont Senior Games Association, I taught history at Rochester Middle High School for 30 years. And I also served as athletic director and coached multiple sports. So uh, I had never heard of Senior Games six years ago, even though I was 
pretty involved in athletics. So um, that's one of our challenges, getting the word out to people. So I'm really glad to be able to be here and share with you. My co-presenters, um, Margaret Gibson from East Montpelier, again, a track and field athlete who has participated in the National Senior Games multiple times. In 2022, she won the national championship in her age group in both the long jump and the triple jump. And she told Sarah and I that she's interested in trying to get into hurdles, which the senior games don't offer. So she's going to be looking at doing some master's events. Um, and the picture on the left there, um, Margaret's there with my good friend from Rochester, Sandra Wall, at the Pittsburgh uh, Senior Games. Okay, come on. Sorry. Not changing. There we go. Hey, Sarah. Um, Sarah has participated in multiple senior game sports, but swimming is her passion. She has gone to the National Senior Games many times and has a large collection of medals and podium ribbons earned in freestyle, breaststroke, butterfly, relays, and individual medley events. She told me I had backstroke on here and had me take it out because she's not won a, back, a medal in backstroke, but I believe backstroke is part of the medallies. It's part of the IM. So, right. So, technically, she's not medal to backstroke. Um, and she's also started to compete in other state senior games championships, and she'll probably tell you about that when she speaks later on. The picture of her there is at the pool at the University of Pittsburgh where we had the national meet. That pool was ridiculous. It was like, how many lanes? Like 30. It was the biggest pool I've ever seen in my life. And the stands were packed. Um, it was a really, really cool event. Really cool. Whoops. Hold on. Wow, big jump. Okay, how it works. So here's the, the basic breakdown. The Vermont Senior Games Association is the state affiliate of the National Senior Games Association. There are branches of the NSGA all over the country and in Canada, and I think there's some in some of the Caribbean islands as well, although I tried to check that and I wasn't able to verify it. At the state level, we stage state championships each year in 14 or more sports for athletes 50 and over. Results are determined in five-year age increments, so 50 to 54 is one age group, 55 to 59 is another age group, et cetera, all, all the way up to our oldest athlete this year was 91. Um, and the way it also works is we do medals in each age category, and then the medals are also broken down by each individual event. So for example, in track and field, if we have an event like the discus, we give a gold medal, a silver medal, a bronze medal to every man and woman, and five-year age groups, we give out a lot of medals, which is cool. They're nice medals, too. Um, and then the state games serve as the qualifiers for the national senior games, which are usually held every odd of the year. So um, the rules for that vary by sport. Um, a sport like golf, for example, only the top person gets in because golf is so popular and it, the, the competition takes a really long time. Um, but on other sports, such as triathlon, anybody who competes can go to nationals in triathlon because trying to encourage more people to do it. So there's no hard and fast rule by sport. Most sports, it's the top three get in. And also, I want to mention that the VSGA is part of the Vermont Council, the Vermont Governor's Council on Physical Fitness. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is my biggest slide, so this will take the longest. So on the left is our calendar of events for this year. So you can see we started May 21st with swimming. Then we did a pickleball tournament in Barrie and, and then over Labor Day weekend. We did a 10K road race in Montpelier. We did track and field in Burlington. We did the 1500 meter power walk, which was at the track and field meet. Um, then we had the National Senior Games right in the middle of our, scene, our season. And then the way our season went this year was that's when it started raining. And so the triathlon got rained out, racquetball got canceled, our golf barely took place. The course was closed for three days before we played. It was unbelievable that we even got out there. Uh, tennis our last day was rained out. We had rain and pickleball. Um, the 5K was beautiful. Beautiful day on 5K. Um, the cycling was touch and go the whole time, but we got it in, and then basketball and table tennis were inside 
and table tennis was Saturday, and if you remember Saturday, it poured rain all day. So it was really great to be inside. So a little bit of background here. Um, the Green Mountain Senior Games began back in 1983. That was the original name of, of it. And I believe your medal is the Green Mountain Senior Games medal, correct? Skiing, cross country. There you go. Up and down your calendar, you don't have any skiing. I'll get to that. <laughs> um, good question, though. Um, so I don't know why they changed the name to Vermont Senior Games. It was before I was involved, and I wasn't able to find anybody who knew, so I don't know the answer to that. So at first, the games were held in one location over a short span of time, like the regular Olympics. And in the 1990s, they were regularly held at Green Mountain College in Pulteney. And some states, like New York, still staged their games in, that, in this manner. New York, they have their senior games at Cortland State University. And most of the games in Massachusetts are at Springfield College and it's kind of an Olympic fashion all but one week. We went away from that because what we discovered is it limited what the athletes could do. You know, you couldn't do a lot of different things because if you space it out, you can do like, we have people who do multiple sports like Sarah. Um, the other thing was, uh, as I uh, was mentioned, I'm the only paid person and I'm part time. Um, everybody else is volunteer, and if we do an Olympic week like that, it just totally burns everybody out. So I'm really, I, most of us are quite pleased with the way it works. So in any case, for many years, here we go, there were winter events held as well. However, as time went on, this proved to be too much for the volunteer staff. And um, the one person I know, Betsy, who was around during this time, is, she just said it was just all out all year long, and they just couldn't keep up with it. So um, the other thing is Don Kellerman, who was running the program at the time, passed away, and with him, his expertise in the winter sports went with it, and so it just kind of evolved that way. Um, the decision was made to stagger the games over the spring, summer, and fall months, and to only offer sports officially recognized by the National Senior Games. In 2023, the first competition, as I said, took place on May 21st, and the last was on October 21st. So I should mention that you are allowed to offer other games, such as skiing, which is not recognized by the National Senior Games. The most unusual state sport that I know of is the state of Maine offers buoy tossing. <laughs> which is exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> um, and Massachusetts has a hockey tournament, which is really big, but we just, again, don't have the uh, capabilities to do that at this, at this point. So um, we like to spread the venues around the state, and that's probably the one thing I'm most proud of with my involvement in the senior games. When I joined, it really was the Chittenden County senior games. Everything was in Chittenden County, just about. And so I've worked really hard from my Southern or Central Vermont perspective to try to spread things out. And I think that's been a really positive development uh, for us. So as it says here, currently we're swimming at the Edgar May Center in Springfield. And that's one of those things that, as, a, as an organization, I'm just super proud of. When I started, we had our swim meet was at the Edge in Williston. And then when COVID hit, they shut that facility down. It's not even a gym anymore. It's a warehouse or something. So then we kind of floundered around and had some had a couple of events in an outdoor place in Essex, which was okay, but it wasn't great. And then I was just totally lucky to run into this guy who ran, runs the group me, Center, Christian Craig. He offered to host the meet, and it was just so cool to go down there this year. We had the biggest turnout we ever had, even though it was in Springfield. And um, we are so excited to make uh, our partnership with him. Um, we try really hard to become good partners with the people we work with. Um, and I'll talk about that in just a second as well. So spring pickleball is in Barrie. The track and field meet is in Burlington. We play golf at the Ralph Mott course in Middlebury. Uh, Vermont State University's Castle Coon Campus hosts both cycling and basketball. The Bridges at Sugarbush has been home to the tennis tournament for a few years now, and table tennis takes place at the Shelburne Town Gym. The state championship pickleball tournament is so big that we need two fan venues, Airport Park in Colchester and Letty Park in Burlington. And the VSGA also partners with the Central Vermont Runners to stage our road races. The 10K is in Montpelier while the 5K run power is in Northfield. <coughs> and we also partnered with Vermont Sun to offer the triathlon, which is held at Lake Dunmore. So that's a lot of information, but that's basically the overview of what we do um, in a nutshell. OK. 
this is a really interesting slide because this is um, the overview of what we've done in the last decade in terms of sports and in terms of how many people participated. Um, and you can see some, there's some really interesting stuff in here. Um, so let me just start out by pointing at the bottom line here, the total. This is how many total athletes we had all the sports combined. And so you can see back in 2012, we had 351. And this year, even though it was a bit of a down year, we had 635. So we've almost doubled our participation in the last decade. It does tend to go up and down depending on whether it's a qualifying year for national senior games because that motivates more people to participate. So you can see in 2016, we had 615 people and the asterisk up there at the top is indicating that um, that was a qualifying year for national senior games. And then in the next year, it dropped all the way down to 434 because there was no qualifying. I should also just mention, I personally think those numbers um, in the blue there for the 5K are completely misleading because I was told by somebody that they just counted everybody who ran the race, whether they were seniors or not. So I don't think those numbers are at all accurate. So that's why I, I have them in blue. And the same thing happened um, in um, the 10K, it, 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 but I'm not able to verify that. So. Um, and I should also mention that was one of the reasons why I talked about the partners being so important is that the Central Vermont runners are so great to work with because they do the registration for us, they give me the information, and we, we do have people who are not seniors running in those races. They aren't just senior-only races. But the CVR separates them out for us, and it's very, very well done, whereas other people we work with for the road races were not really willing to do that um, and were not super helpful. So when I talk about getting good partners, that's what I'm talking about. Um, you also can see the sports that we have phased out, um, racquetball, bowling, and horseshoes. Um, and I can tell you, although I'm not supposed to, that racquetball is going to be dropped as a national senior game sport um, in the next few years. So racquetball, we cannot host a racquetball tournament anymore because the biggest racquetball facility in Vermont that we are aware of has two courts. You can't have a tournament with two courts. So we were partnering with New Hampshire, and they're doing the same thing. They just, they just phased it out because no one's signing up. It's just the sport is dying. Pickleball, on the other hand? Uh, yeah. Um, state championship pickleball started with 43, and last year we had 186. And it sells out. We, we can't handle more than 186. So at a certain point, we just say, sorry, we're not taking any more registrations. Um, that's how crazy popular it is. Um, so in any case, you can see, though, we've really done well the last couple of years. And as you can see, the swimming, 32 swimmers this year was by far the largest we've ever had. Um, so that was a really, really nice turnout for us. Um, I also think, you know, a triathlon has been pretty consistent number-wise. Having it rained out, if we had had the triathlon, our numbers, of course, would have been higher. So um, the other sport that we did really well this year with is golf. Um, our sports coordinator, Kevin Pleat, has really promoted that. And since he took over as sports coordinator in 2020, you can see it's gone up quite a bit. Last thing I want to mention about this chart is 2020. You can see during the year of COVID, we actually had three events only. We were the only state in New England that had any events at all. So we were really proud to even put on three events. And I should also mention one of the things that happened in COVID that was really great was um, I joined the National the Vermont Senior Games in 2019. And everything was done in person um, in Burlington. And when COVID hit, we couldn't do that. And so um, one of the things that happened during COVID is guess how we meet now? Zoom. And if you're on Zoom, you can do that from anywhere. So did that make my life easier? You bet it did. And you know what else it did? It allowed us to get other people in our, to join our organization who live in different places. So we have Jim Flint, who's our running guy. He lives in West Rutland. Uh, Matt Guile, who's our webmaster, lives in Bellows Falls. Um, and it's really helped us to expand our group of people and made us a much stronger organization. Um, it also makes it easier for us to talk to our uh, partners and venue hosts. We just set up a Zoom call and talk to them. It's great. So that's been a really positive development. So though COVID was an awful year, um, that was one really positive thing that came out of it. 
Okay, now I'm just going to show you some various pictures. This is where the PowerPoint will be much more fun. Um, so on the left, this is from our track and field meet in Burlington, which we had bringing for that as well. But um, at least we got it in. And that is Margo right there, 618. Um, and that, that looks like a 50, isn't it? Yeah. 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 It. yeah. And that's Sandra Wall next to her. And I don't remember who the woman number six is. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, this picture over here, this is our swim meet. And this, you can see all the medals on all the people's chests. Sarah is right there in the middle right here. And you can see she won just a few medals of that. Um, but as a nice thing about these pictures, you'll see everybody is so happy. That's one of the wonderful things about our organization is that it's just a really, really welcoming and positive environment. Um, the bottom picture was at the Pickleball Tournament in Barry, and these people, were, they, they were just wonderful to work with. Um, Dave Rouleau, who was sitting in the center, was the mastermind behind this tournament, and it was just a really, really good time. Okay, other random pictures, um, and I, I don't think there's really a whole lot to say about any of these. They're all pretty self-explanatory. Um, but again, just a lot of smiling faces. Um, and I they love the picture on the bottom right because one of the things that is really cool about our story is it's in, our, our organization is there's competition, but it's friendly competition. And that is uh, Peter Mitchell there, who's 83, went to nationals and track and field and in the road races. Um, and I think he, that's one of the French Canadian guys that he's shaking hands with. I'm not 100% sure about that. But. Okay, more photos here. Um, that, that 10K uh, road race is in Montpelier. It, it starts and finishes right outside of Onion River Sports. I don't. don't I heard that they're not going to be reopening there, but it was before the flood, so it was a really nice place to be. And the finish is really cool because they turn and they go down that street um, spacing on the name of it right now. It's a one-way street, um, and it's just it's just a really cool venue. They will run out right in front of the Capitol building out to the high school and back. Um, the woman in the middle on, with the purple shirt, her name's Anne Treadwell. She is a wonderful person, and I put her in here because um, this was at the 10K in Northfield, I mean, the 5K in Northfield, and they had a kids' race. And she finished the race, and then the kids' race, race was coming up, and she was like, um, they're charging the kids to run? And I said, yeah, that's Central Vermont Runners policy. She goes, here's, here's 80 bucks. The next, next uh, bunch is on me. So just gave it, it was so nice. And I told these people and they were like, really? But that's the kind of people we have in our organization. It's just really, really nice. Um, this woman in the top in the, uh, center here, she's throwing the uh, discus. Um, and this woman down here from Connecticut is throwing the shot put. And one of the other things that we did this year, um, again, Jim Flint gets all the credit, he got this veterans group in Woodstock to participate in our 5K race. So these guys were the veterans who, who participated. Um, I don't remember the name of the organization, but that was a new outreach for us, which was really great. This guy right there, he was on oxygen, and he walked the entire three miles pulling his oxygen. It was really inspirational. I mean, he finished last, and everybody cheered her when he finished. She looks great. Okay, National Senior Games are held every other year, usually, but because of COVID, we've just come off two consecutive national games. In 2022, Fort Lauderdale, Florida was the host city. This year's games were played in Pittsburgh. And I always love this fact, more athletes participate in the National Senior Games than in the Olympics. And it's the truth. There were 11,037 Olympians in Tokyo, and we had 11,576 in Pittsburgh. And I mean, we felt like, I felt like we took over that Pittsburgh, I don't know if you guys did. You said Albuquerque was even better, so. But you can talk about that later. Um, and so the, the cool thing we did in Pittsburgh was they let us they invited us all to go to a Pirates game. And this is outside the Pirates Stadium. We got to march in. They marched us all the way around the field pre-game. And it was really, really a cool experience. Whoopsies. Oh, come on. OK. The 2023 Nationals uh, took place July 7th through 18th at various venues around Pittsburgh. 
86 Vermont athletes participated, including the two you have here today. As a group, the VSGA won nine national championship gold medals, 11 silvers, and a dozen bronze medals. In addition, the NSGA awards honorary award ribbons for fourth through eighth place finishes. So all told, 41 Vermonters won at least a medal or a remnant, so almost 50% made the podium. Um, the guy in the upper left is Chris Hamilton, who won the national championship in the discus. This is Elizabeth McCarthy, who lives in Hardwick, and she uh, runs all the road races in it, and she does track and field. Um, the two women on the upper left are Joan Weir and Susan Madrigan from Brattleboro. They won the doubles title in their age group. And then these two guys here actually are both Vermonters. They were, they were in the singles finals in the men's 50 to 54. That's John Tashiro and this is Damon Fitch. They're both from Burlington. But that was the coolest thing ever. We had two people from Vermont in the tennis finals. I mean, who would ever have thought that? And they, they played a great match and John beat them out, but they're real good friends and it was so much fun to watch them play. Okay, the other thing that was interesting was it was very well-rounded performance by the Vermont athletes. We earned podium honors in 11 different sports, archery, basketball, cycling, golf, pickleball, power walk, road race, swimming, tennis, triathlon, and track and field. And actually there are two different road races, so actually it's 12 different sports because we won in both the 5K and the 10K. Um, the people on the bottom right there, that's the group who ran the 5K. Um, and they had those cool Vermont shirts that the women, the women here today are wearing. Um, and um, they were just so much fun to be with. And that's Sarah there on the left with the, the woman who did the swimming. Sorry. Um, what event was that one? That was Triple Jump. That was Triple Jump. Um, and one of the cool things is you're competing with people from all over the country. So you're meeting these people that you never knew and um, may never see again. And that's also really, really cool. The guy in the bottom right is throwing a javelin. It was an interesting story. His name's Zane Rodriguez. He lives in Norwich. And Zane is a really, really good javelin thrower. And he was throwing, and he, this guy, he, you know, he threw some ridiculous distance, and his next guy up threw like even farther. And he comes back to me and he said, somebody just told me this guy used to play Major League Baseball. And I was like, what? He goes, can you look it up for me? So I take my phone out and I look it up. And sure enough, this guy pitched for the Yankees and the Mariners back in like the 1990s. And then he like had elbow surgery and that ended his career. But he was sorry, it's a guy who used to play Major League Baseball. It was so cool. Same came and said, come on. So um, picture on the left is Matt Guile, our webmaster from Bellows Falls. He won the, um, the 800 meter race, which is two laps around the, around the um, track. And his story was really great. He won to win the 400, and in the 400 prelims, he tripped and fell, literally meeting you from the finish line. And he was, and he was way ahead. So it was like heartbreaking. So we came out to watch him the next day just to support him. And he ran the best race. He was so smart. He was led the whole way. He won by like 20 yards, which is a lot in an 800. And then two days later, he won the mile as well. So he had a really, really good race. You know, I met this guy from Connecticut who was really, really friendly with us. And he was the guy from Connecticut was there all by himself and finished second. So he like hung out with us for quite a while. Um, I can't remember his name. He's a really nice guy. What's the question? No, I was just wondering how old was he? Matt, Matt is, he's in the, he's in the 55 to 59 group, pretty sure. No, 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 he's not. He's in 60 to 64. Matt's in 60 to 64. And then the picture on the left there is all of us who went to the Pirates game before we marched in. Um, you can see I am not in the light blue shirt because um, I've had multiple knee surgeries and I'm not an athlete anymore. Um, so I didn't feel like I should wear the athlete shirt, so I wore an old shirt instead. And then, so I'm in there in the dark blue. Um, but that was our group that went into Pittsburgh. Beautiful city. It's really, really nice. What was the, what was the time of the fellow on the mile, first, mile distance? Oh, it was four something. 
Uh, yeah, it was Stacks. He's he's a really he's a very serious athlete. Um, you know, we have people who are really really serious and people who aren't very serious. He's a serious one. <laughs> So this, if I'm going to leave you with this one last thing. The Vermont Senior Games also has a very unique tradition that we do to honor the accomplishments of our athletes and nationals. March 15, 2023 was officially proclaimed Vermont Senior Games Day by Governor Phil Scott. Athletes were invited to the State House of Montpelier for a ceremony that included a house resolution. We also did a press conference and a private audience with the governor in a ceremonial office. The March ceremony was to honor the 2022 National Senior Games athletes. We plan to have another ceremony next winter to recognize the athletes who went to Pittsburgh. And no other state does this. We're the only state that does this. And I tell other states that we do this, and they're like, they give me these blank looks, like, what? You really do that? And I have to say, Governor, I mean, both of you were there. Governor Scott was wonderful, and he was authentic. He was not just, he, you know, not like, oh, this is something I have to do. He was really, really engaged with the athletes. It was funny. We took a picture with every single person. He gave us a lot of his time. Um, it was a really, really nice event. Um, Sarah is right here. And Margaret's right back behind her. Come on. OK. Um, there's a picture of Margaret with the governor's son. Really good picture. And um, the picture on the bottom right is during the press conference. Um, and uh, the guy with the long beard is named Grudhalm Kasala, who's from, he's from down south, like Dummerston, Dummerston. And he was a national champion in pickleball. Yeah. Oh, and I should also mention, that's Flo, our superstar 89-year-old. Oops, I'm sorry. Go back. Come on. Sorry this is being so finicky. Too far away. Yeah. There we go. That's Flo right there. Gotcha. And you know, and what, the other thing that's really cool with my position is I know all these people because I'm the only one who goes to every event. So I can tell you, you know, uh, who everybody on this picture is, um, and um, it's really just fun to see them all in, out of the sports arena at this one event every year. Okay, so my final thing I want to say about this, from my perspective, the best thing about my experience for the BSGA has been all the wonderful people that I've met over the years, Margaret and Sarah included. It's an exceptional feeling of being part of a remarkable group and a team. I mean, it just, just it really feel part of the whole thing. And um, everybody's so welcoming. And um, you know, it's just, it just positive all around. And that's it. So what I'll do now at this point is I'm going to turn it over to our athletes. And um, yes, let me do that. And uh, they'll each take a, take a turn talking about their experiences with senior games. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you. Okay, hello everyone. Those pictures were great. George, thank you for sharing those. Um, uh, I am not a public speaker, so bear with me as I look at my cheap notes here. Um, and I don't have to talk too long. But um, I just want to start by saying that being part of the senior games is, is inspiring. Um, I got involved about nine years ago when I saw a news uh, clip featuring Flo, whom you've all heard about and saw a picture of. And at the time, she was 80. Um, and they were talking about how she was talking about track and field, including pole vault, which she took up at age 65. Who does that at age 65? Well, Flo. And now, of course, she own, you know, has world records in multiple age groups uh, along the way, including the decathlon that she just competed in as the first woman at age 89 to ever do so. Anyway, she's just back from that. Needless to say, Flo is still going strong and is still my inspiration. That news story years ago ignited my curiosity. I was 54 at that point in my life. My days revolved around full-time work 
and watching my kids do their sports. I wasn't doing anything to stay fit or active in my life at the time, and um, I also wasn't really doing anything just for me. So in a brave moment, I took the plunge, signed up for the uh, Vermont Senior Games long jump, happening in three short months, and then there was no turning back. So when I first started sprinting, I had a lot of pain in my hips um, due to 30 years of sitting at a desk job. And I was Googling my, uh, things like, how do you know if you need a hip replacement? And, um, but a physical therapist told me that, she, she gave me a lot of hope, but she, she just said, uh, when you know, injuries come and go, and you just work through them. So that was what I needed, and the hope that got me to stick with it. She was right, I worked through it slowly, and now at 62, I can do things I couldn't do back then, and I'm in much better shape. Fast forward eight years, so I've been to eight Vermont Senior Games. I've been to three nationals. Flo and I are now friends. We train together on occasion, and we even room together at nationals. Um, my roommate, my training partner, I should say, Sandra Wall, good friend of, of George's, she comes to train with me every week. She drives an hour to come here to train with me at the U30G track. We do that all, all year long, and then when the weather turns, we, we go do that at UVM, the indoor track up there. So, um, you know, I've gained Sandra as a wonderful friend. And also, I've added events along the way, so including jumps like the long jump, the high jump, the triple jump. Um, I do the 50 and 100 meter sprint, and I'm just, like George mentioned, trying hurdles, which is a little scary, but a good challenge. So, to wrap up, being involved in track and field as a senior has been really added so much to my life. It's given me a sense of purpose. It's gotten me through some rough times because it's something that I'm doing for me. And having that competition ahead gives me the extra push I need to, to keep at it and stay fit. And as George mentioned, it's a wonderful supportive community of people at all fitness levels coming together to be active and have fun. As you heard also, the Senior Games has all kinds of sports. So I just encourage, if you're thinking about doing it, find one that you love and just do that. I recommend track and field because there's a low bar for entry. With 14 events, there's something for everyone, whether you want to throw something, walk or run around the track, or jump. And um, I'm so grateful for the Senior Games and for you know, that opportunity to, that makes it possible for us seniors to stay active, engaged, have fun, and be inspired. Hello, my name is Sarah. I didn't prepare anything, so I'm just gonna wing it, go off the cuff here. Um, I have been participating in Vermont Senior Games about as long as Margaret. I started the year I turned 50, and I did my first swim meet. I heard about it through one of the swimmers I met through the uh, master's group that I was swimming with at the time. And he said, you're turning 50 this year, aren't you? You know, and he said, well, why don't you come try Senior Games? You know, I don't know, competition? He's like, no, 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 come on up, come on up. You'll win medals. <laughs> oh, well then let's, let's see what we can do about this. So I went at the tender age of 49 because senior game starts the year you turn 50. I turned 50 in December and that, see, that swim meet was actually in June. So there I was, 49 years old, and I'm like, are you sure you're being here? Yep, I'm here, I'm here. I did two events, the 50 free and the 500 free, and I got a gold in both of them. And I have not been able to stop. I haven't been able. I haven't looked back. I have encountered a few uh, musculoskeletal issues, and the next year when I did senior games, I only did freestyle events. But I have since branched out, and I'm now doing the 200 fly, just become one of my favorite. But what I want to talk about also with 
the senior games is you've got people like me. I actually didn't start competitively swimming until I was the year I turned 50. Uh, I could swim. I swam last in college, but not for the college. I did it to stay in shape. And I just went back and forth and back and forth and did my own sort of self-imposed slip turn I, that was probably atrocious, but I did it. But I have since learned better technique, better skill. And then this year I went to New Jersey and did their, their state senior games. And I did the 200 fly and I got a personal best, which was really exciting. But also, during the 200 fly was a man in the 80 to 84 age category. And he did it in 12 minutes. So to give you a comparison, my time was three minutes and 44 seconds. So I passed him, I passed him, I finished. He's going, he's doing his best. I jumped over to the next lane and did a cool down. I got out and he's still going and he's still going. So we're all cheering and when he finishes with his two hand touch, that's his rock star moment. Everybody on the deck is cheering for him because he took 12 minutes, but he got there and he did it. He was the one in there swimming and we're all on the deck watching him. So that's what drives me to continue with the senior games. And also like Margaret, I've done three nationals. To me, as a swimmer, I call my swim con. We show up, we hang out in the pool for four days, we're all in our swimsuits, we're getting in and out, we're doing laps. I could walk down the deck and be like high-fiving everybody. And everybody's just thrilled to be there. Everybody's like, how'd you do? I did it. Well done, you're here. It's a really, really supportive, encouraging environment. It's a lot of fun. I have, um, I have to say I'm not super close with my relatives. They're not super uh, supportive about what I do. They're not discouraging, but they pretty much just don't have anything to do with it. So, but senior games is filled with people who are like, high five, well done. So I have branched out and I've also done the power walk and I did the bike race last year on a borrowed bike that I rode four times before I did the event. I came in last, but so what? And I also did the triathlon at nationals because I could. I trained up for it. My goal was to do the triathlon, try to do it in an hour 45, and do the run without stopping, and that's what I did. And I was last as well, but I was out there doing it. And that's really what it's all about. It's like, like Margaret said, take a look at the website, see what we offer, pick something, come out and say hi. If you're not comfortable competing, come volunteer. We always need people to help out with that. And you'll see how friendly and what a wonderful, warm, supportive group it is. It, it, that's, that's really what it's all about, and it's a lot of fun. So I encourage everybody to come say hi. We've got, we got a medalist right here. I'm sorry we're not doing winter games anymore. I am too. But Miss Massachusetts does. Massachusetts still has some, some Is winter games. snow this year? <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem with the winter games, isn't it? <laughs> so anyway, I thank you for listening. you have a question? Do you have coaches? You can get coaches. I don't, and Senior Games doesn't offer them, but I know a lot of people through the swimming, category, swimming um, groups who do have coaches. There's a master's group that swims, and I know there are probably track and field people who can hire their own coaches, but they're not coordinated through Senior Games. And I assume you have to pay your own freight when you go to one of these events, is that right? Yes, yes, there, that is one of the questions that people have asked. The, the Vermont Senior Games are very, very affordable. The swim meet, I think, is $35, and you can do up to six events, and then there's relays afterwards. I think the most expensive might be some of the track and field, it was up to golf. The golf, okay. And that's because the course. Because it's golf. Is, golf course, is expensive. We have to pay the course fee. Yeah. Give us a break, so. But I know the senior game, the Vermont senior games also offer scholarships for people who have, are not comfortable, unable to pay the fee. But yeah, we have to we drive ourselves to, our, to the venues. And then when it comes to nationals, nationals is $180, I think, for the one event. And then it's $35 for a second event, which is why I added the triathlon, because I'm like, it's 35 bucks. Where do you do a triathlon for $35? You don't. <laughs> so, and I drove, and I could take my bike. But then I had to pay my own um, you know, gas and accommodation and meals. So yeah, it, it can add up. I'm hoping to find a sponsor one day. <laughs> that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Any questions for anybody? I have a comment more than a question. Uh, you're really inspirational. That's really wonderful. I live in a very small village of Adamant. Oh. And um, 
and uh -huh. we have braces there. And two two women who are incredible runners, Donna Spires and Dot Helen. And Donna does the triathlon internationally. And um, <laughs> I, was just great. I want to say Donna is the physical therapist that was told me yeah, 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 that injuries come and go, and she's right. Yeah. I've had some injuries since a little bit. You just learn to listen to your body, yeah. and you take your time. But yeah, she's great. Yeah, she's 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 really yeah. Yes, a hundred mile run. Right, the iron, the iron one. The iron one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is there, is there medical staff at the event you go to? Have, there's you. I think I'll there's you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that will really depend on what the event is. So, for example, we had table tennis this weekend. We did not have medical staff present. However, the facility we're in, the rescue squad was literally on the other side of the parking lot. We do have, have an emergency action plan for all of the events we do. So um, again, at certain events like basketball, we had an EMT there and we needed her. Um, we had several people get knocked over and um, one guy I thought had a concussion. Um, you know, when 85 year olds play basketball against each other, it's scary. <laughs> scary. Um, and I was really glad she was there. Um, and at track and field, we will have a, um, a trainer there. But again, for like golf, we didn't have anybody there. But again, the rescue squad was just down the road. Um, so we do, we do consider that we are trying to get a grant to get an AED, um, which, we, which we think we should have, and we don't. What a lot of the AED? It's a defibrillator. It's a heart attack. Now, a lot of the facilities that we go to, like, like the table tennis and the swimming, they've got one there. But other, facilities, other places don't. Um, and the other thing I'll, I should mention is this spring, um, six or seven of us involved with senior games were CPR and first aid trained. So um, I, wish I, I wish we had the resources to have somebody there at every event, but we do put thought into it and you know, we're in a lot better place than we were a few years ago where we really didn't have even, you know, it was just like, hope things go well. <laughs> but that's a great question. Yes? Yeah, Sarah said that she had been a swimmer in high school. I'm wondering, for Margaret, what sports you had done before you started, uh, you know, back in your early years. <laughs> My early years. Yeah. I did um, track and field in high school. I also did gymnastics. Um, back then, uh, you all probably know, you didn't start when you were three doing things. You start when you're in high school. So I did track and field in high school, and I did one year of college, the long jump. And so that was really why I, I got back into it, because I was just curious to know whether I could do it again. Of course, your legs are, in your 50s are totally different than your legs in your 20s. I also just to add, to, to add on to that, I mean, there are some sports, for example, pickleball didn't exist. And so everybody who was at a pickleball tournament has learned as seniors to play. So um, that, that's definitely something that is doable. And, and pole vault, you couldn't pole vault or triple jump um, in high school back then for women. They, that was, the guys did that. And so I took up triple jump three years ago. So not many women my age do triple jump, right? So it's, a, it's sort of like the long jump, but you're, you're doing three steps. So they measure from the third step. Um, and it's kind of a technical event. Not many people do it. But you can medal doing triple jump because not many people do it, for example. How did you learn the technique for triple jump? I had a, co a coach who taught me. Yeah. I found, her, I found her on Front Porch Forum. She posted. I'm, and she's a really great, um, she, she still holds multiple records at the high school level. At, so she's like now 27-ish. Um, so I started out with some help from her. Yeah. I, w I want to comment about the, what Margaret said about there's not very many people who do triple jump. There's also, at the Vermont level, the state, the state level, there's often not very many people in each age category at most events. So you have a very, very strong chance of meddling, regardless of what you do or how well you do it. And that's just a real moral booster. But the way, what we say is, 
it's not my job to fill the field. Mm -hmm. I'm the one who shows up and does the thing. So there you go. But it's, it's really a morale booster than walking yeah. we, out. We had, we had a guy in table tennis on Saturday who was 73. And he played in a tournament and said it was the first time he played table tennis in 30 years. <laughs> and he lost every match he played and still got a bronze medal in his age group. And he was <laughs> thrilled. <laughs> um, so the other thing I should mention too is, although the National Senior Games kind of frowns on this, but it's because they don't understand the logistics of Vermont, we combine age groups a lot. So like when Margaret, well, both, both of you, when they go out, like when you go and run an event, she's not gonna be the only, it's not gonna be all these people in her age group. It's gonna be younger and older people. And I personally think that's a really cool thing. And we had a guy in tennis this year who was 84, um, and he was the only person who was playing who was over 75. So we played him with all these other people, and he said to me after the event, he said, George, that was the most fun I've had playing tennis in years because I got to play different people who I'd never played before. And, 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 you know, and, he, and he won his age group because he was the only one, and he didn't win any matches, but he had such a good experience, and that's kind of what we're, what we're talking about. You, you had your hand up before. Yeah, what is it about pickleball? People are in the <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Uh, yes, they are. Um, and I, I can't, if you guys want to comment on it, okay. I can just say it's from personal experience. Yeah, I, I can't play racket sports because I've had knee replacement and it's one thing they didn't want me to do. But I have, play, I have played, like hit the ball two times. And the thing that was incredible to me is, you know, and I'm not a good tennis player by any stretch of the imagination, I felt totally competent to play pickleball in about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to learn. It's so easy to learn. Um, and I think the other thing that is really popular about it is it's a very social event because most people right. play doubles. And I hadn't thought about this, but the court is so much smaller than tennis that you can't help but interact with the people you're playing with. And I think that's a, a, a real reason why it's so popular. And the other thing is, it's, you know, mixed doubles is just as popular as men's and women's. So it's just, I think it's a really good way to meet people. Yeah. I'm sorry, I cut you off. Oh, yes. I'm so happy to see all these young women participate. And they are young to me. When I was in school in the 30s and 40s, girls didn't have a chance to be athletic. Mm -hmm. You could play basketball and stop at the middle of the court. You didn't oh, right. do any of these things. And now you're out there working towards your personal best. And the competition is limited. It really was found upon females, and it still is in many cases. And reaching your personal best is so important. And the senior games that I've participated in, everyone cheers for everyone. It's a very good group support feeling. And I'm so glad the women are out there. That's all. Do the, venues, do the venues provide their facilities for free? It depends on the venue. Um, swim, uh, swimming is a great example. So with swimming, it's a community center down in Springfield. Um, and what they did was they had a fee which they agreed to waive for us. But what we did was we then gave a donation to their youth swim club. So, because we figured, you know, they, they're losing all this business by us being there for a whole morning. So, um, it depends on the venue. Like, Burlington High School would pay for, for the track and field. Um, and um, the road races, we don't pay. Tennis, we, we pay a court fee for tennis. But we don't pay for pickleball. Um, so, it really depends on the sport. I want to, that reminds me, I want to comment about the venues are also, some of them are very community oriented. Like George mentioned, this, the swim meet is at the Springfield Pool, the Edgar May Pool in Springfield. And they were very welcoming. Their staff were there on hand to help us, to help check in. The staff lined up volunteers to help with the timing and count the laps on the 500. And it, it really, it just brings out that group too. And they're all there cheering us on as well. And then the same with the 5K. It doubles as the run and the power walk, and that is piggybacked onto the 5K 
fun run that Northfield does and just kick off their Labor Day weekend. And so the, is it the Central Vermont Runners? Yes. That, that's the group. They oversee it, but yet it's also this community organization. The, the townspeople come out, they're cheering us on, and the people volunteering. And so a lot of the senior games events are in venues and, and in situations where it's also very community oriented. It's not just we show up, we do our thing, and we leave. There's, there's lots of other activity around it. It's very welcoming, very, it's very nice. Very Vermonty. <laughs> yes, and I, I, again, I should also mention that's not the way most other states do it. The most other states, they have a specific senior games event that's run by their group, and there's no mixing of the ages or, um, you know, again, a lot of our events are mixed. So. Um, and a lot of us love to go out and cheer you guys on. <laughs> the love it. <laughs> we even did one here with a uh, younger yes. in track and field. Track and field, we did. That's right. It was yeah. The youth on up. Yes, right? it was. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. You get information in the sports pages of the newspapers, like the Times Argus, which I purposely do not read. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if there was a chance, I mean, sometimes I'll look to see who. That's, that's, that's one of our challenges. We have had a really hard time getting media to do much of anything. I mean, the first year I was with Senior Games, I would send out a press release after every single event, and basically nobody would print it. Mm -hmm. um, on the flip side, the Hardwick Gazette, which Jim Flint writes for, they have a, Jim writes an article for them every single week, which is heavily senior focused. So it really depends on the media. Um, I'm sorry. Okay. You know Jamie too. I know him, yeah. Yeah, the, the best place to get our information is on our website. I know for some people that doesn't work, but that's where we're at at this point. Any other questions? Comments? If not, I don't know. Do you, can you hear me or do I need the mic? No. Good. Okay, so I want to thank George and Margaret and Sarah. Sarah. Sarah, sorry, I remember it's Bombardier, your French. Bombardier. And Bavier, okay. Bombardier. 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 Well, we used to have, you know, Bombardier oh, trains. Yeah. Yeah, right. Over everywhere. in Berrytown. <laughs> So anyway, thank you for coming, and um, they'll stick around for a few minutes afterwards for personal questions and inspiration if you decide to take something on. But don't forget to turn your tags into Allison and Marge over there. And uh, thank you all for coming. I hope to see you next week.